Hey everyone, it's Chef Alyssa back with another demo for you. Today I've got three simple ingredients that create something we all love. Flour, egg, and a little bit of olive oil, and when combined with a little bit of kneading, we create pasta dough, aka carbs. Yep, I'm going to be making pasta dough, and after today you're going to see how easy it is to make at home. So let's go over the measurements. Two cups of flour. I use bread flour for the higher gluten, which is better to use, but if all you have is all-purpose flour, then that's okay too. Three large eggs and one egg yolk that I will separate. One teaspoon of kosher salt. One tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And some extra flour, just in case. Safety tip. Make sure to sanitize your work area. Five tablespoons of household bleach to a gallon of water will do the trick. And don't forget to wash your hands under warm water with some soap as you will be handling the dough. You're going to want to sift some flour into a mound. If you don't have a flour sifter, you can use a strainer like I'm using. What does sifting flour do, you ask? It helps to break up any clumps that may be in the flour and also helps to aerate it so it is easier to work with. Then use your fingers to dig a well out because this is where your eggs will go. Then crack your eggs into the well. If you're feeling confident, then you can crack it directly into the well. But if you want to play it safe so you don't get any eggshell in there, you can crack them into a bowl first. Don't forget, we have to separate one egg yolk from the egg white. This egg you should do away from the well. Now use a fork to scramble the eggs. As soon as they're scrambled enough, go ahead and start combining the egg and flour like you're scrambling it all together. I have a bench scraper to help combine it. Don't be afraid to get your hands messy because this is the fun part. Your mixture should look dry. Now add in your olive oil and teaspoon of salt. Your dough really needs some good kneading, so roll up your sleeves and be ready to use those forearms. If your mixture feels too wet, go ahead and dust with more flour. You'll knead your dough for about 12 to 15 minutes. We're working up the elasticity in your dough. If you under knead it, it won't be as springy and also may form bubbles during the cooking process. Simply just keep folding your dough while pushing and pressing it forward and turn it 45 degrees every so often. You've come this far into learning about pasta dough. It's not as intimidating as it seems, right? If you have a KitchenAid or standalone mixer with a dough hook, you can save yourself the kneading 
by having the mixer do it for you. A mixer is nice, but if you can craft it by hand, then why not? You want your dough smooth. When it's ready, just poke it and if it springs back up, it's ready. Now wrap it up and let it rest for 30 minutes. While the dough rests, let's get our mise en place. We'll be making aglio e olio with the noodles. I love garlic, so I'm using four cloves. Next, let's chop up some Italian parsley. We want it chopped, but not too fine. It's very easy to get parsley and cilantro mixed up when you're at the store. If you can't tell between the two, try rubbing a leaf between your fingers. Parsley has a mild taste and scent, while cilantro is very distinct. I also have half of a lemon, parmesan, salt, and pepper. Now let's get back to our well-rested pasta dough. Dust your work area with some flour. You can be generous with this part because you don't want your dough to stick to the countertop. I always work my dough in parts, so I'm going to cut it into thirds and work on them separately. The dough likes to stick to my rolling pin, so just carefully remove it and if you need to, dust more flour. Whenever you roll it out, keep turning the dough little by little to make sure you're rolling it out evenly. Rolling the dough out shouldn't be too hard now that we've let the dough rest. It's important that you always give any dough time to rest. It allows time for the gluten to relax and also helps when it's time to roll it out. Gluten is what helps to create any dough shape. I am rolling my dough out to get it as thin as possible. You can also use a hand crank machine like a Mercado Atlas. They are usually around $100 or so on Amazon, but I don't mind the hard work because it means I get to eat some carbs. I always work out for my food. We're just about there. Now I'm going to fold my dough so that it's easier for me to cut it into fettuccine noodles. Separate your noodles so that it can dry a bit. In the pot, I have a quart of boiling water. Don't forget to season your pasta water with salt. The salt from the water seasons your pasta and helps enhance the flavor. Fresh pasta cooks much faster than the packaged pasta you buy at the store. So keep an eye on it. When it begins to float, it's ready.
Now let's put everything together. I have my pan heating up on medium high for about a minute. Generously add in olive oil. The nice sheen on the oil is how you know it's ready to saute in. Then add in your sliced garlic. Make sure that it doesn't burn. If you feel your heat is too hot, then adjust to a medium. Stir your garlic around. We are basically infusing the olive oil with the garlic. Now add in your pasta. Yay! Make sure it gets coated in the delicious aglio e olio, meaning garlic and oil. Add in your parsley and mix around. Then shortly after, squeeze in the lemon juice. Citrus helps brighten the dish. Add in your salt and pepper to taste and some parmesan. And before you know it, you're done. It's ready to be plated. Now pick out the nicest plate you have. Grab your small tongs or carving fork and twirl the pasta onto the plate. Add a bit more of pepper some parmesan, and fresh parsley. Enjoy your homemade pasta.